very, very excited about doing this dive decoder. The, this is the real guts of the program. And I wanted to do this in the very beginning. Like I wanted to just go straight into the diet, but obviously we didn't. What we first did, we start talking about what is the course itself. And that's the first video. If you haven't seen it, check out our YouTube. The second one is the discovery of the blue zones and how to do our research about diet and the area and the environment and everything else. But this particular one is talking about the diet decoder. This is what I feel is the real guts of the program. How do we, how do we go from our unhealthy habits into healthy habits and how do we change our lives? And it begins with our mental. That's why we did the first, the, the first course is our mental uh, preparation. This is what we put in our mouths. So first we make the choice. Second thing we communicate with our mouth. So how do we take charge of what we're putting into our mouth? And how do we do it effectively that we can actually quantifiably look at the change that happens within our lives? So we, and, and this is the blueprint of, of the course. So I just want you to make sure that you, if you don't have a copy of this, that we get a copy to you. Uh, I'll put a link in the, in the chat so that you could see it. But what we're talking about is breaking down the blue zone, which is a really big concept. And if you don't know about the book, please uh, look for the book online at Amazon for the secrets of longer living with Dan Butner, or check out his uh, Netflix series, live to 100, the secrets of the blue zones. And so, but looking at those things, how do we chunk that down into a cohesive plan that we can actually infuse in our daily lives? How can we begin to use the philosophies and things that we learn in the blue zone? So we break it down to basically three phases in this course. Phase one, which we're into right now, is the fundamental fundamental or foundational habits. What is our daily habits? What are we doing? How do we actually create healthy habits? And as you can see, number two here, we're on the diet decoder. Next week, we're talking about fitness fusion, and then we'll go into balanced living and purposeful wellness. So amazing things there and make sure you stay tuned in to the end so we can start talking about our special guest, Stacey Chalemi, and talk more about diet and disease and so on and so forth. But let's get into this. I'm Rob Shockey, in case you didn't know, I'm the found, one of the founders here at Qantas Life. And it wasn't too long ago that I myself was not in great shape. I let myself go. I gave up the zeal of life and I went into really bad health concerns and uh, working with a good friend of mine, Michael Carnavale, we were able to go ahead and start defining what products, supplements and dietary changes and everything else I could make in my own personal life. And we decided to create a company around that. And that's Qantas Life, living a quantifiably better life. And now we share these products and techniques and education around the world with people all over that are visiting QantasLife.com. And so just to give it for instance, I have been in great shape and I've been in really poor shape, mentally, physically, spiritually. So what you're seeing here during COVID, like most of us, we had a sedentary life. I was doing, you know, bad habits in terms of eating and drinking and smoking even. I'm, not, I'm a non-smoker now, but that's where I was. Doesn't define who I am, but that's who I was. And so I was 265 pounds, classified obese. I didn't like who I was. I didn't like who I looked like in the mirror. I didn't like the person on the other side. So I said, I got to make a change. But it wasn't until I landed in the hospital that I decided, okay, if I don't make a change, this is actually life-threatening. I couldn't walk. I had plantar fascia. I had my legs were swollen. My system was basically revolting at the way that I was treating it. My temple was actually saying, we're going to evict you. That's what made the change. They said, okay, today's the day. Got to do it. That was November and last year um, in 2022. And I said, okay, let's, let's go ahead and really knuckle down on this and let's make a change. So December 2023, um, along with a lot of different <laughs> daily actions, every day daily actions, I was able to get myself down to weighing in at 220 pounds, reduction of fat completely, right? Not all the way, but reduction of fat, a lot of the fat, increase of muscle mass. And I got my zeal back for life again. And life is better today than it was when I gave up on life before. And it's just amazing that tiny switch that happens in your, in your mind that causes a change that it can reflect in all areas of your life. And so we're putting that 
as part of this change is your dietary. So we want to go ahead and make sure that you have this diet decoder game plan. It's just a cheat sheet to help remind you of, uh, of how to implement your diet and your diet changes. And we'll have that on, on online available for you. But losing body fat is almost like losing your history, right? Because what we eat, we retain. And if there's toxins in our food and environments and everything else, we retain that in our fat cells. In essence, we're carrying along with us toxins and things that make us unhealthy, and we're bringing that to us through our present and obviously into the future if we don't make a change. But losing body fat is like shedding a heavy cloak on a long journey. With each pound lost, the steps become lighter and the horizon seems brighter, revealing the strength is not always present beneath the layers, right? So when you start shedding away the past, you realize your strength. And that's true in personal relationships and everything else. But embarking on this change can sometimes be overwhelming where we're trying to figure out our nutrition and, and where do we begin and everything else. That by itself can hold you back from reaching your, reaching your goals. You might also be looking at, well, okay, so I make these dietary changes, but then I give up everything. I eliminate all my favorite foods and I can't indulge in everything else. Indulging in your favorite foods from time to time in moderation is okay. Grant yourself grace. If you're working every day on a better, healthier living, then, then go ahead and indulge and, and take some grace for yourself and, and embark on, on a better change for life, your favorite foods might change. They might change. Your favorite foods might be that new salad or that might be, you know, a new tofu recipe. It might be a new Mediterranean salad. Who knows? Your favorite food may change. And, and it has for me, but it, it's not about me. It's about you. So also there might be some hesitation on, you know, spending more money. Actually, what you're doing is redirecting funds from where you used to spend money to where you're spending money today. And so you might be frustrated by, by doing that. And this, this whole task can be overwhelming. You might actually get burned out or frustrated because how do we go from, you know, a meat diet or the processed food diets to a plant-based diet and, and marshal how this slow change can take place. So we want to, we want to break this down into action steps daily action steps. Uh, again, I'm just talking about small steps. I'm not talking about life changing monumental steps, but small action steps that you could do every day. So we want to, so we want to learn about plant-based diets and locally sourced foods that we can, that we can find. We want to analyze the nutritional and health benefits of these diets as we look at, at, at these diets. And we want to incorporate the blue zone dietary practices in our daily meals. Okay. So it might be one time in a week. It might be twice in a week. It might be three times in a week. It might be every meal that you are actually practicing some of these dietary changes in your meal habits. Even changing one meal a day can add another year of life. What, what would you do for one more year of life? Right. Good quality life. Right. So, Learn about the, learn about the plant-based diet. Learn about what kind of foods there are. This is a shot from my own local grocer. I mean, it's just a local place here. I live in Florida. So this is just a local place, local farm, and they have all these great foods, uh, available, fresh foods right off the farm. You can find these places. You just have to look. And it turns out this place was in between two different major grocery stores. And here's this beautiful place here where I can find fresh beets and potatoes and everything else that I really want to get into my diet. So many people are not aware of the benefits of, of, under, of a plant-based diet, right? And depending on the location, you might not know where the farmer's market really is or, you know, what those options could be when you look in there. And engaging with local food sources often takes additional time, right? They have to invest a little bit more time. It's not like just walking into Walmart or Publix and saying, okay, this, this, this. So you have to look and, and discover. And there's a joy in doing that. There's discovery part is fun, right? So 
Learn about the plant-based locally sourced diets can, can, um, that can be consumed in the blue zone without becoming a nutrition expert. So that's a big deal. Becoming a nutrition expert. I am not a nutrition expert. I have them in my life, but I am not. So I have to look at others in my life and say, okay, what are they doing? And do I want to be like that in a year from now? Do I want to live like that five years from now? And how are they living? What are their, what are their stats look like? What is, what does their blood chemistry say? What is, what does that all look like? Right? So I think this graphic is so important. And, and so when you look at your involvement, your personal involvement, we're talking about our personal lives. So that's, that's one thing, our personal lives. But your personal life can have a ripple effect on everyone's life moving forward, right? Um, if enough people make small changes, it can cause a tsunami of change, right? But what are you consciously saying when you're eating or when you make a dietary change? What are you, what are you trying to communicate in your world, in your world philosophy, your world perspective? Because when you look at what it takes in order to create some of these mono farms, the, the chemicals, the wrecking of the ha habitat, the issues with, you know, bee population going down because they're in monofarm, they don't have enough variety, right? The, the transportation that it takes, the energy, the amount of carbon footprint it takes just to transport, you know, on large shipping containers, food from California all the way into the islands where they need this fresh produce. Just that alone, the carbon footprint is immense with oil resources and gasoline and, and manpower and, and, and just the waste, the sheer waste. In fact, most of the produce that reaches the islands from that, from that long journey shows up perished because it wasn't meant to go that long. So sourcing local foods can actually lower the carbon footprint of all of us, right? Because we're not, we're doing less transportation of getting that product to your table. So from the farm to your table, versus the farm to processing, to reprocessing, to distribution, to shipping, and then, then to your local grocery store, and then to your table. How many hands touch that? And if COVID told us anything, what are those sources, right? What is the source of my food and where does it come from? So to make things a little simpler, obviously you can, you can get the book uh, um, from Dan Butner on the, the secrets of uh, living longer. And there they have dietary. In fact, he wrote other books on the dietary um, plan and recipes and everything else. But for me, I needed something practical. I needed something that I can like put my hands on and say, okay, here's my shopping list, right? So what is my shopping list? Just give me a list and I'll get the list and then I'll figure out how to make it work. So for me, um, and I'll put this also that I've made available for you so you could take a look at this, but leafy greens and root vegetables and seasonal fruit and fresh herbs and olive oil and avocados, almond milk, oat milk, salmon, mackerel, you know, eating meat, the fish on a, on a limited basis, right? Your brown rice, your quinoa, your oatmeal, your whole grain, uh, breads, lentils, amazing source of protein, uh, eat me. You know, I didn't even realize that, but um, what a, a great, great food that really is and resource. Garlic, turmeric, simmering, ginger. These are, have replication in your body that help you with disease control and immune health and everything else. Green tea every day, <laughs> green tea every day could actually improve not only your health, but your longevity. And herbal teas are definitely uh, in that list as well. Red wine, again, in moderation, right? So almonds, Walmart, uh, walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, a lot of these things we do have as supplements on Qantas Life, but you know, you can always source that locally as well. Um, and you really want to analyze how that looks and, and, and understand that you're going to face some challenges. And those challenges could be emotional and mental stress over changes. It could be the complexity of this. That's why we're breaking things down. And it could be the fear of lifestyle changes, right? Like doing something new could be scary and that's okay. To be a little scared is okay because you could overcome that fear with just making small changes. So facing the fear usually makes the fear dissipate and that's a good place to be, right? But you have to analyze the nutritional balance and the health benefits that are gonna come from this. So you have to look at the equation, right? Of eliminating some of my favorite foods but is the equation mean better quality life? 
hopefully, yes. I believe so. Yes, this is why we're doing the course. So, you know, I might look at this new Mediterranean orzo salad and that looks pretty tasty to me. I, I wouldn't mind having that right now. And hopefully you would too. But you have to analyze the benefits. What's in it for me? So, you know, sometimes we look at what's in it for others and we're always looking for other people or maybe we're trying to help other people. What's, what's in it for me? Let's just keep it centric, right? So understanding the plant-based diets, primarily, you know, raw foods diet, right? Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, uh, legumes, beans, right? And it doesn't mean that you have to go full vegetarian or full vegan, but you can slow these things down and, and make it more proportional, you know, a small part of your diet, not the core of your diet, right? Proteins are so important. So a lot of people say, well, I don't know if I can do this because I really need the protein. Our minds are set like we need protein in order to support, to support our muscles or, you know, uh, development and growth and everything else. So, but, you know, cows and other animals are some of the largest animals on this planet and they are vegetarians. They eat the plant source. That means that there's protein in the plants. All we're doing is eliminating the, the processor in between, meaning I'm going to go to the source and get my protein versus waiting for the animal to go ahead and process it and then eat the animal. I don't want to do that. I, I, I just want the raw food, the raw source, and then I don't have to worry about the animal, right? Because I'm getting the resource from, from, from the ground, right? So fats, uh, a lot of people say, well, fats and carbs and everything else, but Fats are actually a great source. So omega-3 fatty acids, you need that. Your brain runs on these things. Your body needs it for joints and health and everything else. So include avocados, nuts, seeds, plant oils, olive oils. You know, these things help with the mobility of your life and the mobility of fats in your system. Meaning if your body is saying, oh, we've got enough fats, then, then all of a sudden you start eliminating fats from your body. It's a weird trick. It says, oh, okay, we already have that resource or new resources coming in, let's get rid of that old resource. You start to lose fat by taking in healthy fats, right? So <clears throat> as I mentioned before, you need some help. You know, I, I, either you searching online, you're joining a, a webinar like this, or you're getting some professional advice. You know, if interesting enough, getting professional advice is readily available. You can look up nutritionists in your local area and they will help you walk through this transition. And surprisingly, they're not very expensive either, but there are resources out there that can help you getting some professional advice. When you talk to your doctor and he's saying, you know what, maybe you wanna change some things in your diet and you're saying, yeah, well, I still like to do this or I still like to do that. You're not listening. You're not listening. Your doctor might be telling you the same things, but you're not listening. So friend to friend, person to person, get some help in your life to help you decode some of these things also, okay? Don't be afraid to reach out for help. We all need help sometimes, but you have to incorporate it into your daily practice, your daily practice, not, hey, I'm gonna do it next month, hey, I'm gonna do it once this week. Every day, small little changes can lead to big results, right? So you might be fearing failure, you're comfortable in the way that you are, and maybe you're being overwhelmed. It's all right. So I, I think this is an important, I'm just going to read this. Embark on the journey of change today. For each step that's taken is a seed sown in the garden of tomorrow. Every choice, a delicate stitch of tapestry of fate, weaving threads of endless possibilities. Let not the fear for the unknown deter your stride. Rather, let the promise of a thousand unfolding tomorrows guide you. For in your heart, courage blooms and flowers of all your tomorrows. Each petal a testament to the strength found in the moment of decision. So make that change, however small or grand, and watch the horizons of the future expand, painted with the colors of your daring today. You can make the change that can change all of your tomorrows today. So make sure that you incorporate the dietary practices. Look at things that, you know, getting body fat measurements. Look at where you're at today. Just meet yourself today 
And don't be ashamed to look at yourself today with naked eyes, meaning without all the ego, without all the fluff and saying, you know what, this is who I am today, not who I want to be, not who I am at my core, but who am I today? Get that homeostasis. We have uh, availability of DNA testing for your gut biome. We have, um, you know, other tests that we have available coming through Qantas Life. Um, you can get your blood work done. You can get weighed in. You can get body fat checked. You know, we have some resources there, but make sure that you get an evaluation of where you're at today so that you can chart your success for tomorrow, right? So just really be practical. Just be very practical in doing this. Don't stress yourself out. It's so easy to stress yourself out. So don't stress yourself out. Just use the plate method, for instance, right? So using the plate method is like a visual guide. Fill half your plate with fruits and vegetables, one quarter with whole grains, and a quarter with protein-rich plant foods. Simple. Very simple. Just compartmentalize your plate, and then you know you're on your way, right? Diversity. Ensure that you have variety in your diet, different foods, different plant foods, and different nutrients. A varied diet helps round out everything, right? And all the nutrients that you need in your body. And then monitor and adjust your nutrient intake. So you just have to start tracking it a little bit. You know, jot it down what you have. And, and then you can share that with your nutritionist or you can share it with your family and just start tracking that, right? And then look at supplementation that we have on Qantas Life or maybe in locally that you can get. And, and look at things like B12 and vitamin D and omega fatty acids. We have those things available, but you can also possibly look for it locally as well. Make sure you download the cheat sheet and keep a copy of that so that you have this, this reminder every day that, hey, there's something I have to do. And remember that this is just one piece of an overall puzzle of the longevity plan that you want to put in place and the whole philosophy behind the Blue Zones. So here's your homework for the week. We hope to see you next week, but here's your homework. Learn about plant-based, locally sourced diets that you can consume, right? Take a look at that shopping list. See what you can that you can uh, buy locally, right, for your better health and for the economy that you live in. Because healthier economies where you're living help all their businesses, and then we all flourish as communities. Um, analyze your nutritional balance and health benefits of these diets. Really come up with the reasons why, because your reason why is the reason you will do. So find your why. If you find your why, you can be reminded of your why every day. And incorporate this daily practice every day, the blue zone dietary, think of it in your mind, what am I doing every day? Now, you've completed the, what I call the first action course, because the diet decoder for me is the first cornerstone, even though it's the second one in our series, it's the cornerstone of how you can get started. And remember, there's supplements, there's education, there's products that we have on Qantas Life to help the, the new you in this new year. So hope you hope you like this presentation today. I hope you'll join us next week as we're talking about the fitness fusion. Now, that's something else. We're going to have another speaker on that. But today, our speaker is going to be uh, Stacey Chalemi. So let's get into that. Again, I'm Robert Shockey. Thank you so very much for uh, joining, joining me today. And let's get into the interview with Stacey. Here we go. Okay. So amazing to have you uh, with us, Stacey. Um, Stacey Chalemi, for anyone that doesn't know, um, you've been on the Dr. Oz show. You're, oh, I'm going to say bestseller. It said 20 times. Am I right? With 20 times bestseller? I had author. a lot of bestselling books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> author, so, uh, author, writer. You have your own blog. You talk about herbal. You talk about wellness. You talk about diet, nutrition. I mean, you are like this encapsulation of health, wellness, and information uh, about just a healthy living and healthy life. And uh, this week, we're talking about diet decoder and and how people can basically look at their diet as as the main way to start getting into a healthier lifestyle is yeah. looking at the diet as, you know, and what are we putting into our, what are we putting into our mouths? Not only was what we're putting into our minds, but we're putting into our mouths as well. Right. But you've been such a big supporter of ours and, you know, I'm just a big fan of you and I'm just so happy that you're able to spend some time with us today um, 
to talk about, you know, diet and, and nutrition. And what, is, what does diet mean to you? Well, how do you, how do you define diet? Like what, what is it that like that first thing that goes off your mind diet? What, what is that for you? When I think of the word diet, I don't think of, I don't agree with that word, that, that concept. I agree yeah. with healthy living, you know, because it's a lifestyle change and it has a lot of components. It's not just what we put in our mouth. It's how much sleep we get. It's how we're taking care of our bodies. It's how we take care of our stress. People don't realize, but 70% of illnesses is caused by stress. So when you think of the world we live in, how could we avoid stress? Stress is everywhere. So, you know, there's a lot of components that goes into wellness and goes into good health. And of course, everything we put in our, our body, you know, we, we should think of our body as a sanctuary because everything we put in it plays a big role on how we're going to feel, how our mind's going to focus, how our body is going to be feel like, and also, you know, our spirituality, because everything is connected. It's just like thinking of like a chiropractor. If your spine is out of whack, you're going to have aches and pains you're, until you get adjusted and everything's back into place. You know, that's how our body is. We have to treat it you know, like we are sanctuary. The foods we put in our body, people don't realize, but you know, there's so much processed foods out there. There are so much foods out there. Everyone's in a rush, rush. Let's throw it in the microwave, get it done with, or, you know, it's pre-made, but it says healthy, you know, it says, you know, lose, lose, lose 10 pounds in 30 days, eat our food, you know, and all that food, when you go into your body, if your body doesn't recognize it, your body doesn't know what to do with it. So it can't break it down properly. It stores it. So what happens when you have food that has toxins in it and you're, it's getting stored in your body? It's leaching onto your organs. It's going into your, your body. It's, it's, you know, some of it's turned into fat. So it, your organs are becoming lethargic. You're starting to feel tired and sluggish. You're wondering why you feel fatigued. And then your body is not is not reacting well. So then your, your immune system is going down. So you see how it all interacts and it all plays and if you're not feeling good you can't focus you're you're you start to become foggy and there are specific foods that could actually make you feel foggy so you know what we put in our body plays a big role on how we feel because we need to try to be at our very best because it plays a role on our longevity it plays a role on preventing illness and it plays a role on if you have a condition keeping that condition at a plateau where you could live a sustainable life and enjoy yourself. Yeah, I think, you know, it's really interesting how much, how much that plays a part, you know, in, in diseases and chronic diseases, but, but cortisol and stress plays a part in your sleep patterns. And also yes. that that's connected. So all of this is all connected. So all connected. how much do you see where somebody is, is like doing like, a spot check and they're saying, well, I just want this stubborn belly fat to go away, but they're just interested in a fat burner that just works on the belly fat and a wrap or something like that. And they're not looking at the, the total picture of everything that's, that's involved in creating the belly fat to begin with. That's what you're saying. Look at yeah. more of a holistic, uh, which is really your premise, right? A holistic uh, approach yes. to, to, to nutrition, not diet, nutrition. Right. And I, I think people, you know, they get angry. They're taking their goal and they, you know, we live in a billion dollar business, you know, vitamins, supplements, all this stuff is great, you know, and everybody has claims that, you know, lose weight and this and that. But people are taking these fat burners and taking these things and they're saying, hey, I'm not getting any, any, any skinnier. I don't feel good. You know, it's, it's not doing anything for me. And then you say, okay, what do you eat? You know, and then they're like, well, I had pizza for lunch today and, you know, I ate this, you know, cereal and it's loads of sugar, you know, and it's like, well, you know what? It doesn't matter how many fat burners you take. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're not going to incorporate a healthy lifestyle and plus sleep helps you because while your body is renewing, that's the time when your body burns fat. You know, you, after you stop eating at a certain time and you go to bed, your body is renewing itself. It's recharging. It's the whole, the whole body has a process when you sleep, you know, sleep is important to get those seven eight hours of sleep is really important you usually go you should go towards the eight hours if you can and you know this this all plays like a huge role in in our health you know we talked about uh we talked in a previous call about um our health and you know i was just looking at something about sedentary life and how most americans right now are living in a more sedentary life 
that internet and technologies are providing this sedentary life. And then blood flow is part of this sedentary life. And we're not clearing things because we're sedentary. Yeah. And then how much, how much do you think the, the role of even walking and exercise pertains to this holistic approach to, to nutrition and diet? Oh, it's very important. Exercise is, is extremely important. We need to consistently be circulate our blood flow because without circulation, you start to see muscle tightness and cramping. And then you start to see that your, your body starts to ache and you start to get pains at an early, earlier age. You need to constantly utilize that, that blood flow in your body. And even 15 minutes of walking around the block once or twice can be enough for some people so they can sustain a, a healthy lifestyle. You know, you don't have to be at the gym five, six hours a day lifting, you know, these in enormous weights to actually, you know, keep your body fit. You could have it a minimum of 15 minutes. You know, if you if you can go longer and you, your body can sustain a longer exercise period, go for it. You know, get those, that 45 minutes, that half an hour, you know, do a recovery or, or, or two recoveries in a week. You know, th that's great if you can do it. But everybody is at a different plateau and a different a different level. So you have to really go with what your body can do. That's why when you see people when they do yoga, when they do different poses, some people are doing certain ones and some people are doing other ones because you can't all you can't all, you can't compare yourself to what others are doing because you really have to go with your body and you can't push your body you can only do it when your body's ready to do it yeah i think the you know one of the one or two of those yoga poses would just basically break my neck so i, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think i was doing any handstands or anything else like that you know <laughs> I, I might do you know a sun pose that might be great you know but, <laughs> you know you gotta you gotta you gotta take it take it where you're at and and just do something i think doing something is better than doing nothing and a lot of people are doing nothing yeah. So, you know, even even just moderate walking, you know, as I, as I mentioned before, for me, I couldn't I couldn't run at 265 pounds because, right. you know, my knees would just hurt too much to do that. Yeah. And also my diet was causing inflammation. So I have inflammation in my joints and then I'm trying to run on top of that. It was just like a really bad combination. So moderate walking and then changing of the diet help with the inflammation that I'm dealing with. Yeah. How do you how do you think when you, you know you talk you touched on um uh, chronic diseases and stuff like that. I know you've had your own personal challenges. You wrote books about this. So um, uh, the gut biome and chronic diseases and diet, do you see like the, the common thread just between the gut biome and epilepsy, uh, you know? Oh, a hundred percent. I'll give you a, a, an a idea how important it is. So when I had, um, when my epilepsy was really bad, I was taking about 12 seizures a month. So I, I was trying to take, uh, the doctors had me on and off different medications. They were trying to find the right cocktail, the right blend, the right dosages. And, you know, I, I kept having seizures. So then I started to change my lifestyle. I started to change the way I ate. I started to look at how much sodium intake I was looking at, how much sugar I was, I was um, intaking. You know, I started to eat more cleaner, more green. I started to get more sleep. I started to learn different techniques to handle stress. And then I started to detox. So when I started to detox my body, I started to incorporate different probiotics, prebiotics. I started to you look at, at my gut and I started cleansing and trying to balance my gut. And I, I went into gut health and I look and once I start to focus on gut health, my seizures went from 12 seizures to nine to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, two, being controlled. So as soon as I started to focus on gut health and I started to balance my gut and I started to detox the toxins out of my body, I, you know, along with the other stuff I, I incorporated and I, my seizures stopped and I got my life back. And I still had to take medication. I still take medication, but I was taking medication before and then I was trying healthy lifestyle and, and it's still, I still was having seizures. And I also did exercise and I wasn't in the beginning, I wasn't doing anything strenuous. I was doing meditation in the morning to relax myself, to calm myself, to get my stress level down. And then I would do some yoga. And then once some days I would be on the treadmill. And like you said, sometimes I would walk around the block. And just to interject, I had a friend who just walked around her lake. She had a lake in her community. She walked around it three times, changed her eating habits and lost 30 pounds. So there you go. 15, you know, it, it took her about 15, 20 minutes of walking. But yeah, I, I actually got my chronic illness 
under control by focusing on gut health. Amazing. Amazing. And and so, you know, if, if there's someone out there that's facing a challenge, you know, epilepsy is nothing uh, short of disabling. I mean, it's just a disabling um, disease and it controls your life. I mean, obviously it sequesters you to the home. You're having, you know, just driving a car, things we take for granted, you know, how does, how does the depression like fit within that? And you're saying, you know, how can I make a change? So a lot of people might be watching this and saying, how can I make a change when I have got this challenge, this challenge, this challenge, how did, where did you find the intestinal fortitude, <laughs> not just gut health, but intestinal fortitude to say, you know what, I have to make a change and I have to make a change today. And furthermore, how do I stick to that? How to stick to that change? I think you get to a point in life where it, when you when you look in the mirror and you don't like who you see and you don't like the life you're living, you have to you you're I was determined to find that answer. I I became, you know, I was going to figure out a way that I could get my life back. And, and that's how I looked at it. I, I did not want epilepsy to control me. I want to be in control of my own life. I was not going to let a condition stop me from living the life that I had in my head, I had, I, you know, I, in my head, I had that goal. This is who I want to be. This is what I want to become. These are my dreams. I'm going to make these dreams a reality. And I just, I became resilient and I became determined. I set goals for myself. I set short-term goals, long-term goals, because in, in a previous conversation, we were talking about, it doesn't happen overnight. We have to make tweaks. So, you know, I started making tweaks and, I, and in a couple, you know, in a couple of months, like three months, I started so noticing some little changes in my health. Six months, I started noticing more changes. Nine months, I could definitely see a difference. And in 12 months, I felt like a new person. I start, I felt like I was actually 20 to 30 years old, younger. I got all this energy that I never had you know, before, but because the, the medications were weighing me down, the foods I was, you know, I wasn't getting enough exercise. I started exercising more. I was on the treadmill. I, I stood up on the, on the fifth, level 15 the entire time going uphill. That's how much energy I got just from taking care of myself, balancing my gut eating right, exercising, and and just doing the whole lifestyle change that we talked about. Because it's not one thing, I, it's everything. And and you got to get to that point where you just say, I'm sick of living this life. I don't want to settle. That's the, the key. Don't settle. Everybody has the ability to change. We all have the ability to change. Some people fear change. Some people fear failure. But listen, it, it, are you happy with who you see in the mirror? Are you happy with the way you feel? Do you want to feel like this the rest of your life? You know, there are some people that can't even get out of bed. Like you mentioned, you were at a point where it was hard for you to walk and you couldn't exercise. Does a person want to feel like that the rest of their life? Imagine if you feel like that now. Imagine how you're going to feel like in 10, 15 years from now. Is that the way you want to spend the rest of your life? And you have to ask yourself that question. And if the answer is no, because no normal person wants to feel like that, then let's make a change. You could do it with the proper guidance, the proper you know um, help from people, and the right the the right foods and the right supplements and the right way of taking care of yourself. Incorporate a little exercise. You could be a new person, and it's not hard to do. It's baby steps, breaking it down little by little. It may sound overwhelming, but if you break it down and you do a little each week, and you start making little tweaks, you're going to notice a difference. And that overwhelming picture is going to be nothing after you you get to the end of the rainbow because you're like, wow, I was so overwhelmed in the beginning, but I had someone maybe who helped me and I made all these little tweaks and now I feel great, you know? And, in, so, you know, there are 70 year olds that could do cartwheels, you know, don't you want to be like that? You know, I had a woman in my yoga class, she could do splits. I can't even do a split, you know? <laughs> you know, did, did you ever think that, you know, having you know i think a testament and i'm going to ask you this question and let me rephrase it you know you're being featured on television you're standing next to dr oz you're you're having this surreal experience of being on set and being invited and and everything else and you're, you're publishing all these books and did you did you ever think that like you're talking about baby steps but you know you began by changing your life and then you began to then influence other people's lives through your being that inspiring story did you ever think that like when you were facing 
you know, these getting out of bed kind of challenges that you could actually be on a set and, you know, and, and be in the public eye like that. Did you ever think that? Was that ever a goal for you? Like you said, short-term goal, long-term goal. Was that one of those things or no? Just happened. I, I w- no, I, it was, I went through a depression. You know, I, I felt very yeah. depressed when I, when I got to the point, because I had mentioned to you earlier, when my seizures were not controlled, I didn't drive for 15 years and I felt confined in my own home and it was feeling like you were in prison. And, you know, I, I felt very depressed. My, my, I, but I, I was determined to figure out a way. And I, you know, I, that I, that's when I, I said, said to myself, I'm going to make changes. And then as I made changes, I started feeling great and I wanted to share it with the world. Cause I realized if I could do this with my condition, cause this pertain to all can everything I was doing was not for epilepsy you could do this any condition you could do this even healthy people can do this and feel even better or sustain their healthiness and and live a, a longer life by doing these things so that's when I started to write everything down I wrote my first book and I got an email back from somebody and they said I was on the verge of suicide I read your book I followed your regiment and I just want to say thank you because you saved my life and that's when the light bulb went off. I was like, wow, you know what? This is my purpose in life. It's it's to help others. It's to show others. Because I, even when I was blogging, people were responding, you know, hey, you missed the day. I didn't get your article, you know, and people wanted to hear about it. And I was like, wow, you know, so then I and I and I happened to meet an herbalist while I was working and he needed a lot of research and writing done. And I started to like do all this research and writing and, and I, I found out so much information about herbal supplements and natural healing and holistic living. And that's when I started applying a lot of these things to my own life. And that's when my health started changing. So that's when I really got motivated and I started writing books. It took me like five or six years. I wrote the complete herbal guide. I, and then I started talking about the, the, the power of positivity because you can't get through anything in life if you're negative. You have to sustain a positive attitude. Positive attitude is key. If, out of every negative thing that happens to us, you have to pull something positive out of it. If you, you know, there is, if, if something happens to you today, you say, okay, what, what did I learn from it? Did it make me stronger? Did it give me the knowledge to make me a better person for tomorrow? You have to just turn things around and focus on the positive and set those short-term goals up, set those long-term goals up. And you need to just go, like we said, baby steps. Because I did start a depression. I was depressed about my life, but then I said, I had it. I want a better life. I'm not going to let it get, I'm not going to let my, my condition control me. And that's for overweight people or people with anxiety or people who suffer in depression or speak with diabetes. You have to get a point where you have to feel like I'm not, I don't like the way I'm living. When I wake up, I have aches and pains. You know, I, you know, people who have gout and their, 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 their foot or their toe is swollen and they can't walk. Life doesn't have to be like that. Let's change our diet. Let's see what supplements we can add. Let's see what type of technologies are out there that can make me feel better and apply it. Try it, you know, and and, and if it's if it's okay with your doctor and your doctor doesn't have a problem with it, you know, if you're taking other medications, because I always say if you're taking stats or you're taking some type of medication, talk to your doctor first. But there's a lot of great supplements and natural products out there that can do wonders to your body. And there are a lot of other things that we can incorporate that can make you feel like a good new person. And wouldn't it be nice to, you know, go through life and you had your obstacles, but overcome them and then get to the point where you could actually live the life you wanted to. Like, like I think of Disney when I say that, you know, make your dreams a reality, you know, why not? It's possible, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely possible. And I think you're a living testament to that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful to have you in our sphere and, and and to be able to to be able to have spend some time with you and share a little bit about uh, your story and 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 what you're doing. But I think you know I think it'd be great if people can um, go to your website, uh, learn more about you, um, and tune into your podcast. The name of your podcast is The Advisor with Stacy Chalemi. There you go, The Advisor with Stacy Chalemi. So is that on where uh, that's available everywhere? Is that available on? It's, it's available on all platforms. Yes, all platforms. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna to have to put that in the we'll put that in the chat so that people can uh, can tune in to you and get more of this amazing advice and amazing inspiration motivation. I know I'm I'm touched by it uh, every time we engage. So 
thank you so very much for for spending some time and um you know we hope that uh, we'll see you on a on another one of our uh, our sessions again you know so thank you so very much Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. And I got to say, too, you got to give yourself credit because you came a long way and, you know, you shared your stories on other podcasts. And I got to give you credit and I got to say kudos to you because you came a long way and you overcame a lot of things yourself. So you did it pretty much the same way I did it. And so, you know, I want to give you a clap and an applaud also. (laughs) Thank thank you. Right. Well, where there's a will, there's a way. Yes. So and definitely we're strong willed people and we just found our way. But I think like you said, you know, it's it's small steps in the right direction every day. And then you gain momentum, you gain momentum. And then you look back and you say, well, I really did clear through a lot of things in my life. And I'm glad I did uh, either uncomfortable or 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 not. So, yeah. um, and I think I think, you know, before we go, the key is when they start to feel better and they see improvements, that's when they're going to be even more motivated to continue and to go up the hill and win the battle. Absolutely. So win the battle, Stacy Chalemi. Thank you so very much. <laughs> you're and, welcome. Um, good, good luck on your trip. I know you're preparing for a trip. So thank you again yes. for spending some time with me and, and today oh, and welcome. sharing your story. You're amazing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right.